ಭಕ್ತಾನಂದಪದತನಾ ಸೇವಕ ಸದಾ ಮಹಾಸಾಸ್ತ್ರಭ್ಯಾರಥನ ಗುಮೇ ಪಡಕದ ಕರೆ ವಾರ್ತಾಜ್ಯಾರೆ ಸುರಸರಿತಾರ ಸಮವಹೆ ಕುಸಂಗಿ ಸತ್ಸಂಗಿ ಸಕಲಜನ ಚಿತ್ತೆ ಅತಿ ಚಹೆ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನಿಜ ಗಣೇಶ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನಿಜ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ ನಿಜ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಓ ಮೈ ದಿ ಲೋಡ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲವೆಡ್ ಎನ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾದ ಗುರುಜಿ ಎನ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿ ಡಿವೋರಿಸ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ there are numerous religions in the world each and every religion has their own unique philosophy their own unique beliefs and their own unique ways and traditions where they go about go about and where they administrate their rules and how they maintain such a spiritual life style you can say out of all these religions there's a foundation to each and every religion the main foundation is the philosophy that that religion has or that faith that that religion provides now out of all the religions if we take a look inside of hinduism and inside of hinduism in swami narayan the religion that we are associated with there are two fundamental you can say wings the reason why i say wings is because these two wings are the pathway or our are the two main you can say pillars that hold the building up just like how an airplane can go and fly at the height of 33,000 feet in the air and go thousands and thousands of miles without any kind of disturbances or without any kind of you can say problems because obviously it has an engine it has fuel as well but the main thing of an airplane is it has wings not only one wing but two wings and due to those two wings it is able to fly steer and get to point a or get from point a to point b but in our religion what are those two wings well there are agna and upasna agna is one wing upasna is one the other wing we're going to take a deeper look inside both of these concepts and why they make up our religion and why they are the foundation to our religion in sadguru gunatitan swami's vato swami says that agna and upasna are the two wings to going to akshardham meaning with these two wings one can attain akshardham but first and foremost what are they second of all how do i administrate in my life and third of all what exactly do i have to do to obtain these two wings you can say well first and foremost let's look at the first wing which is agna now what is agna agna is a wish or an instruction simple but it's a wish or an instruction by bhagwan swami narayan what do i mean well if we look at the religion christianity they in christianity they have the 10 commandments now <coughs> this is there you can say agna bhagwan or their god has made 
Ten Commandments for them to follow and abide by. And in the same very fashion, in the Swaminarayan religion, there's the Shikshapatri, which holds 212 verses, not all for just one specific group, but Bhagwan has dissected it in such a beautiful way that it can pertain to many, many groups. Like inside the Shikshapatri, there's verses especially for saints. There's verses especially for devotees. There's verses especially for Achari Maharaj. There's verses especially for Brahmacharis. It goes on and on. But Bhagwan has designed the Shikshapatri in such a fashion that each and every human being, no matter who you are in this world, can abide and live a prosperous life by following the Shikshapatri. Now, Agna is the Shikshapatri. Bhagwan has written it himself in Hari Mandap, Vartal, 200 years ago with his own hands and has verified it with his prominent saints and then has published it and pretty much put a stamp on it that these are my commands for all of you. Simple commands like not eating onion, not eating garlic, and major commands like not performing violence or not drinking alcohol or eating meat. They all come and they're all to be followed. But back to our topic, back to our wing, Agna is pretty much instructions followed or instructions set by our Bhagwan. Now, in the time of Bhagwan, Sriji Maharaj, there is a widow by the name of Ladiba. She lived in the city of Buj. And Ladiba was a really staunch and great devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. She had much devotion for Bhagwan and she really, really had intense affection for Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So at one time, Sriji Maharaj actually went to Buj and stayed at her home to give the Divine Presence and to give her happiness. There, Bhagwan tested her and Bhagwan knew that she was a widow, obviously. And in that time, era, 200 years ago, widows had special, you can say, rules that they had to follow. Like, they had to wear all black. Also, they could not go to any kind of, you can say, functions, celebrations, other marriages. They could not enjoy any kind of those things. Also, they could not wear any kind of jewelry ornaments. Uh, no form of any, you can say, out or worldly materialist, materialistic, uh, you can say, decoration. So they had to live a strict life and pretty much worship God. This was rules for widows. It's also marked in the Shikshap of the Bhagwan has said and set forth rules for widows. So she was a widow and what Bhagwan commanded her to do was wear nice clothing, wear ornaments, and go in the middle of the city where the well was and draw water from the well and come back to her, her, her home, which was on the outskirts of the village. Now, this was, you're probably thinking, this is such a simple command. All she has to do is wear nice clothes, put some ornaments on, and then just go to the middle of the town, the village, draw some water from the well, and then just come back. But this agna, this command that Bhagwan, this instruction that Bhagwan told her was very difficult because of public ridicule. ridicule. There was many, many people in Buj who knew her, who knew her, you can say, situation, how she was a widow, and how she pretty much lived a very simple and sober life, due to the commands, obviously. And when she found out, or when she was given this command by Bhagwan, right away, immediately, she changed into really nice, decorative, colorful clothes, put on ornaments, 
and then took her pots of uh, pots of clay of uh, water or pots of water and she went to fill the water from the well. Now at that time, many, many devotees looked at her and shouted out, Who have you married? What are you doing right now? I, we thought you were a widow. And she would give an answer that for millions and millions of lives, I've spent being born and have married many, many men. But yet, now I have an immortal husband who is Bhagwan Swamiran himself. So by his commands, I have done this. And he has commanded me to draw water from the well and come back. All the people of the village were pretty much in awe, very shocked, but at the same time, admired her integrity, admired her, you can say, will to follow the commands of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And due to that, she pleased Bhagwan, and Bhagwan became very pleased by her actions. Why? Simply because she followed the commands of Sri Sri Maharaj. It was simple. Just to take black clothes and work colorful clothes, put some ornaments on, and then just go and get the water from the well and come back. But not only that, moreover, she did it with enthusiasm. Moreover, she did it that this is my... Bhagwan's command, so I should do this. This is the kind of agna that Bhagwan wants us to possess. No matter what Bhagwan says, no matter what is written in the scriptures, we must follow to obtain one of the wings to going to Akshardham. Now, that was the story of agna, but you can just think, I can give you an example, that Agna is kind of like a bulletproof vest. Now, a bulletproof vest, obviously, its job is to pretty much stop bullets from penetrating your body, puncturing your body. And pretty much with that lead vest, that bulletproof vest, it takes that, you can say, pressure and you're saved from the bullet wound, you can say. But if one didn't have a vest, then obviously one could die right on the spot or get seriously wounded and injured permanently for life. Now the bullets are in the form of maya, materialism. You can say all these distractions for the eyes, all these distractions for going outside seeing many, many restaurants, hearing many, many people's voices, opinions, thoughts, all these are Maya's illusion, or all these are distractions from getting to God. But by wearing that vest, Bhagwan gives us a beautiful boundary. And if we stay inside of that boundary, then there is no harm that can be done. Even if Maya in the form of materialistic pleasures are coming at you. Yet, one cannot be affected because you're wearing that bulletproof vest. So, if you weren't wearing that vest, what would happen? Well, we've seen in the Ramayan, Sitaji, she was commanded by Lakshman to stay inside the border that he had made. And if she had stepped out, there would be great problems for her. Yet, she was unpatient and couldn't follow the command of Lakshman. And she just stepped one foot outside of that boundary. And right there, Ravan came and took her. And took her to Lanka. And there, she had to stay with Ravan. And she was miserable for some time period. Why? Because she broke the command of Lakshman in the same way. In the Shiksha Patri, it says, Those who disobey my agnas will suffer great distress in this life as well as the next life. This is verse number 9 of the Shiksha Patri. Bhagwan strictly says it. On the other side, not to be afraid. You don't have to worry. Bhagwan says, Those who follow my agnas 
will be happy in this life as well as the next. So Bhagwan is pretty much giving you and laying out for you both sides. It's a matter of what you choose, to follow his commands or to break his commands. This is our choice. This is what we have to do. That's why we're listening to this lecture. That's why we're giving, you can say, weight on this point. Because Agna is already set by Bhagwan. He's already done his work. Now we have to do our part and finish and follow his Agna. And when we do that, then Bhagwan becomes pleased. So this is one wing. Now, obviously, even if you want to take a plane in the air, you need, you can't just take it with one wing. In the same way, you need two wings to fly a plane. No matter if you're flying 500 feet in the air or if you're flying 33,000 feet in the air, you need two wings. This is a necessary, this is a compulsory, you can say, matter. So, on the other hand, we have the foundation, the wing of Upasna. Now, Upasna is something that you can say is the philosophy of God. Understanding the nature of God, this is one part of Upasna, and having faith in God, this is the second part of Upasna. This is, you can say, the heavy part, or the part which is deeper and harder or more difficult to understand, but yet necessary in order to reach Bhagwan. Because if you only follow the commands of Bhagwan, sure, by the grace of Bhagwan, it will take you there. Because Bhagwan will give you another wing in the form of Upasna. When you follow Agna, Upasna automatically comes with it. In the same way, when you follow Upasna, Agna also comes with it. They're both, you can say, inter interdependent and they both rely on each other in some way. Just like how in a social dealing, just like how, for example, the President of the United States, you don't know his status, you don't know who he is, you don't know, but then you find out that this is the President of the United States. He has control over the United States. He has the right to command the army. He has the right to make rules. You can see all these powers and then after you understand, after you hear the glory of, that, of the president, then when you hear his name, Barack Obama, or if you just hear the president, then something else occurs in our mind. Something like, oh, the president is here? Meaning, we're astonished just to hear his name. Why? Because we've understood some form of glory, of his greatness, who he is, how his nature is. We've understood something about him that's making us in awe. In the same exact way, when we understand who Bhagwan Swaminarayan is, the glory of his greatness, the nature, how he is supreme, almighty, then when we hear his name as well, then we would also be in awe. Now there's four factors to Ubasna that are interdependent on each other and are needed. The first factor is believing Bhagwan to be Sakar. Sakar meaning with a form. 95% of religions don't believe God to have a form. This is the main issue in religion. But a question for you is, if Bhagwan didn't have a form, then who made all this? This earth, this universe, this cosmos? The very fact that humans exist, the very fact that this earth is in existence, the very fact that these u this universe is in existence, is that Bhagwan or God himself has created this and after his creation then everyone has come to life so going back to the point Bhagwan has a form if he didn't then there would be no Bhagwan but there is 
proving that he has a form. Another point is that if Bhagwan didn't have a form, then how could he make something with a form? Meaning, if Bhagwan was formless, then how could he make something that has a form? It's not rational, and it's a little difficult to understand. But since Bhagwan has a form, he can make things that have a form. So that's the first concept. The fact, second factor is believing Bhagwan to be divine. Obviously, this is something that we just have to experience more than just relate. Understanding is one thing, and then experiencing is another thing. To understand Bhagwan to be divine beyond human qualities is a second factor. The third factor is believing Bhagwan to be pragat, meaning manifest. Bhagwan is not a mere statue. We go to mandir every Saturday or Sunday, whenever, and we have the darshan of the idol in the middle. And this is our routine. We bow down, do dunwats, and then we just go off. And for those two or three hours, we don't even look at the form of God. Not even once. But if one had this understanding that Bhagwan is Pragat, he is alive, he is manifest, he is looking at me, then even in that, you can say, form, that statue, you can see Bhagwan moving, talking, laughing, looking at you, blinking. All these experiences can come to life only when you understand that Bhagwan is not a mere statue, but he is live, he is talkative, he is manifest. And the last factor, and the most important factor of all, is understanding Bhagwan to be Sarvopari, meaning supreme. When one understands Bhagwan to be supreme, then everything else automatically comes. Just like how when one finishes high school, automatically when one takes an entrance exam, just like the SATs, ACTs, one automatically is eligible to go into a college in the same exact way. To understand this is the most important factor of religion because this is the main philosophy. This is the main foundation to understand Bhagwan to be supreme. If this foundation is not, you can say, poured right, if this foundation is not dry, if this foundation has some kind of problem, then everything else is of waste. But if this main factor is grasped and understood, then no matter if you don't have any other, you can say, spiritual endeavors, tools, you don't have anything to worry about because you have this main factor. And that's understanding Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be the supreme Lord of Lords and beyond all. This is the main factor of Upasana and one must understand this to attain God. So today we've looked at two wings. The first wing is Agna, the second wing is Upasna. When these two wings are developed in one's life, then going back to Sadguru Gunatidan Swami's Vato, one can attain Akshardham easily. But there's always a but. These two wings can only be developed by the association of such God realized, self realized, and one who has developed these two wings in one's life by his association, by pleasing him. He is an Ekantik Satpurush. He has realized these factors. And without a guide, you can never go to Akshadam, according to Sadguru Gunatyan Swami's Vato. In the same way, without these two wings, you cannot go to Akshadam. So, Understanding Agna and Upasna by the association of Satpurush 
is the very form of satsang. So, please understand these factors. Even if those who go to temple every Saturday or Sunday, ask these questions. First, what is agna? What is upasana? Sure, you've listened to this lecture, but go a little deeper inside. Find out what you have to do for your practical life in order to develop these two factors. See, it's been now routine that we listen, but there's no practicality. And due to that, there's no results that are seen. But to see results, you also have to implement some of this knowledge into your daily practical life in order to see, you can say, the fruits of religion. Lastly, in conclusion, Yudsiber 2014 is about three and a half weeks away. I highly suggest those who have not registered, please register by emailing at loyadamnj at gmail.com or contacting Loyadam Mandir, which is 732-377-3486, and we'll send you a link for registration. And I highly suggest that everyone prepares. There's an information leaflet inside which will be attached to the email. You just have to email. Please please uh, send all the information and the registration link, and it would be sent to you via email. So please do not forget to register. Hope to see all, all of you in Beer 2014. Now, ending my lecture, Bhujar Rushi Swami will give his lecture. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ni Jai. Varnive Sharamani Adarsanam Mandaha Sarchirananam Bujam Pujitam Suranaro Tamer Muda Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Sri Hari Krishna Maharaj Jai Supreme Lord Bhagwan Swami Narayan, our Puja Guruji, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Describing the glory of Satpurus, Sadguru Adharan and Swami had written one stanza in the Haricharitam Sagar. Sat Purus ko bachan jo Brahmanda fire yah fire na so Aise drad rakhi bisvasa Ananya drad ho na haridasa Ananya Drad Ho Naharidasa 
Sadhguru Adharanand Swami described the glory of Satpurush. First of all, what is Satpurush? Satpurush means a great saint who has real realization of God, who has direct contact of Bhagwan. Just like we are talk, we are talking with each other face to face. Similarly, such a saint is so highly on the platform of religion that such saint can have such realization of God that they can easily and whenever they wish, they can talk with God. This is the definition of Satpurus. Sadguru Adhananan Swami says here, such Satpurus, we should understand the glory of such Satpurus. But how? We have to trust in the words of such Satpurus. Because Swami says, Satpurus ko bachan jo brahmand fire yeh fire na so. Meaning, the words of such a Satpurus, whether this universe remain or not, remain stable or not, but still the words come out from the divine mouth of such a Satpurus are remain forever. But as we are called as educated person or as we have some more intellect and because of our education and intellect, we cannot believe in these words of Sadhguru Adharanan Swami. Whether we have such realization, such experience with such, uh, such Satpurus or not, if we have experience Satpurus in this way, if we have trust, then we have realization of such Satpurus. But if we have not experienced any incidents in our life with such Satpurus, then most of us cannot believe in these words of Sadguru Adharan and Swami. Or if we have belief, but still we cannot accept such words by our heart. If we believe such words by our heart, then we definitely experience such things with our Satpurus. At the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, mostly all the saints come from Aksar Dham with Sri Ji Maharaj. And so they all have such power to forecast anything at any time. They can know what will happen in the future, what will happen to such person this person, that person, in this village, they know what will happen. Sometimes, such Sadguru, Santo, explain in front of devotees that this will happen in the future, that will happen after some days. But not every time. One thing is also important, whether such Satpurus explain what will happen in the future or not, but still we should believe that the Satpurus know everything, they are all known. Such Satpurus, they know what was happen in the past, what is happening in the present, and what will happen in the future. 
we should understand in this way the glory of satpurush but not only after having such incidents witness direct with such satpurush whether we have experience we, whether we witness incidents or not but we should have from faith in our satpurush and his words because this is not my words this is the words of sadguru adaran and swami still if we have no such belief we have not such understanding our mind could not accept these words let we see the real incidents at the time of sri ji maharaj sadguru gopal and swami was the most spiritual elevated personality in swaminarayan sampraday after bhagwan swaminarayan he was the head of the sect he has the power just as the power possessed by bhagwan swaminarayan sometimes goparan swami had shown the such power and met such and sometimes he remains silent that is all according to bhagwan swami narayan's wish but once upon a time in the city of vadodara there are many devotees among those devotees krishna ram shastri was a profound pandit means the scholar of sanskrit and that's why he was a member in the court year of the king maharaja sahaj rao there are many other pandits also the members of the court year once upon time after some days there was eclipse of moon all the pandits they knew astrology the new astronomy so all the other non believer pandits they declared that on such day on particular day there was an eclipse of moon on the other side krishna ram shastri a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan he denied he said there will no moon eclipse on that day krishna ram shastri did not refer his book of astrology and so by mistake he said that there will no any moon eclipse on particular day so all the other groups of pandits they claim that there is definitely moon eclipse on that day and why are you saying that there will no any eclipse then they have decided if the harvil moon eclipse krishna ram shastri should surrender his life and at in the presence of public he should slaughter and if there will no moon eclipse then all the groups of pundits they said we surrender our life then when krishna ram shastri went to his home at evening and he find out the exact date of moon eclipse in his book of astrology then he found that there is moon eclipse on that particular day so now 
he becomes some hesitated in his mind that i have by mistake proclaimed that there will no any moon eclipse on the day and the astronomy says there will moon eclipse on that particular day so now what will happen on that day at that time sadguru gopanand swami was in the town was in the city of vadodara and as a devotee of bhagwan swami and krishnan shastri also every day used to see used to have darshan of gopanand swami and on the next day when krishnan shastri went to gopanand swami and disclosed his heart with gopanand swami he said swami i have by mistake said that there will no any moon eclipse on that day and there is the moon eclipse on that day so now this is our bad and what will happen on that day when moon eclipse was seen in the sky i have to surrender my life and that 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 was my last day but gopanand swami says that you should not worry about that there will no any moon eclipse on that day krishnanand shastri said no swami i have referred the books there will definitely moon eclipse on that day swami says you should not worry about that i will manage all the things when the day on which the moon eclipse is moon eclipse was happen but only due to words of sadguru gopanand swami nobody can seen in the sky moon eclipse all the pandits all the other citizens and the king sajira also eagerly watching on the sky watching the moon but there will no any darkness in the moon even at that day the moon was very bright, brightly luminous in the sky the book is described that on that particular day there is moon eclipse all the pundits also say that there is moon eclipse on that day but sadguru sadpurush gopalan swami says that there will no any moon eclipse on that day then there will no any moon eclipse and that on that day this is what the power of words of satpurush all the pandits still stay to watch the moon eclipse not only these but they have sent their men from the boundaries of 100 miles but nobody can able to see the moon eclipse in the sky finally all of the pandits who are the opposers of swami narayan fellowship they also surrender and they also bow down to krishna narayan shastri but krishna narayan shastri says this is not due to my i have nothing i have also seen i have also referred the book of astrology and i have found that there is moon eclipse in this particular day but this is my guru my satpurush gopanand swami he had said me that there will no any moon eclipse on that day and so he had changed all the mechanism of universe 
This is the power of the words of Satpurus. Not only at the time of Sri Ji Maharaj, but even today we have such Satpurus. If we have clear our vision, then we can see, we can experience such incidents even in this age of Kali Yuga, even in this age of technology with such Satpurus. Sometimes what happens, even though we are staying and we are living in the middle of such Satpurus, in the company of such Satpurus, but still we cannot recognize him. One day Gopanand Swami was talking in the assembly and he also glorifies the Satpurus. He also explained the glory and greatness of Satpurus. At the time, one devotee asked Gopanand Swami, Swami, you are talking about such Satpurus, but how can I find such Satpurus? If I want to meet such Satpurus, then what I have to do for that? How can I attain such Satpurus? At the time, Gopanand Swami said that such Satpurus are even sitting in the assembly, even such Satpurus is speaking to you, but if you have a little God-related intellect, then you can recognize such Satpurus, but not otherwise. In the same way, we have attained such Satpurus, by whose words everything happened, but if we have not a slightest religious intellect or a re intellect which we can use in our path, in our way to Akshirdham, then we cannot recognize such Satpurus. There are many, many incidents in the life of our Buddha Guruji. There are many, many saints and many devotees had experienced the power of his words. Let me discuss some incidents and briefly. Once in the village Loya in India, in Loyadan, there was before many years there were not some development in Loya Dham and at the time right now the place right now on which the new temple was going on building and at the same place there were we have a wooden boundary wooden compound wall and somehow I don't know the reason but Anyhow, fire the all the fencing, and at the time Guruji was also there. He was watching the fire, fire speedily come run out on the fencing. one foot by one foot gradually increase the fire but all the saints worried what will happen after our compound was completed next compound the next fa next fencing is of another householder who who is not duty and if his fencing is burned out we have to pay him something. And so all these santos are worried about that problem. But Guruji was calm. Niskam Swami was there. Puja Guruji said Niskam Swami, if you want to stop this fire, you mark the line. At the same point, 
when you have the line when you have draw the line fire cannot cross that line and niskam swami had trust he had faith in the words of puji guru ji and as he had draw the line according to guru ji's words the fire which is not a small fire but at the point when the line was drawn at that point fire automatically stop this is the power of satpurus word satpurus ko bachan jo brahmand phire ya phire na so after some year from this incidents we have clean that place all the field we have clean and plant the big temples on same field before the one day of silanyas mahotsav there is a ritual of drilling the earth and on the exit under the shrine of bhagwan means under the sihasan of bhagwan and so if the water come out while drilling that's very good but in the saurars reason there is no water under the earth if we drill until 500 feet 600 feet at that time if we have luck then merely some water come out but guru ji say all the saints explain the problem and ritual to guru ji that we have this problem and on other side we have no such time to drill until 500 feet guru ji said don't worry about it and you should just start the drilling you have water in short time the santo had decided to drill the point when guru ji mark only at the bottom of 50 feet after drilling 50 feet we have a lots of water nobody can believe this incident because in the sauras region there is no water that is never 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 the water at the bottom of 50 feet this is only because of the words of our guru ji more than that now in the construction we have need the water for the farming we have need the water so puj aksai swami handle the project at the time and so he need to drill at another place for water water for farming and water for construction so at decided place he had started drilling and after 500 feet there will no water and he had phone to guru ji guru ji there will no water there is no water even after 500 feet and now we have decided to stop the drilling but guru ji say no you should start drilling even some hundred feet more and puja aksai swami had also trust in the words of puja guru ji so he had continued to drilling and after five feet more we have unbelievable water 
this is due to words of pujya guruji next year from this incident more water required pujya aksi swami had decided to drill on another place at 100 feet after drilling 100 feet guruji had phone guruji had call pujya aksi swami and ask about the work aksi swami described that right now there is a drilling in the field and now 100 feet but there there is no water guruji say you should stop the drilling there will no water but aksi swami say if we have water at last year at 500 feet and this is saurash region so it is definitely no water at the feet at the bottom of 100 feet so he had decided to drill more up to 500 feet and even after drilling at 500 800 feet there is no a drop of water this is also because of guruji's words he know what will happen what is under the earth he know what is in the sky at the time of bhumi pujan mahotsav there was monsoon and all the saints worried about the heavy rain if on the day of bhumi pujan if there is heavy rain then how can we manage the devotees how we perform the rituals guruji said don't worry about that there will no rain on that day and if there is there, there will rain then your assembly will not disturb so at the time of assembly there is very very heavy rain in the saurash region even after 2 kilometers of our loya dam but there is not a drop single drop come from sky in the loya but as the assembly was completed and in the evening as the devotees had completed all the finished all the canopy and all other things gathered and properly submitted dismounted the stage and all the other things and very heavy rain was ready to rains the purified earth this is also due to words of pujya guruji he had stopped the rain so he can do whatever he wishes but not every time sometimes he also saw us that he is not able to do something he is not able to do anything but he is so powerful there are so many incidents but we have limitation of time there is no any limitation of glory of such satpurush there is no limitation of such divine incidents but our intellect have many many sort capacity to grasp it and so many incidents we cannot understand but after listening such incidents in the life of pujya guruji after listening such incidents we should at least have faith in the words of pujya guruji just you think that we have faith 
we have faith in the modern advanced forecasting weather forecasting system our weather forecasting system declare that there will rain there will heavy rain tomorrow then we will cancel our program of outside why because we have trust in our forecasting system similarly if we have trust we have faith in the words of puja guru ji then surely definitely we cannot do anything more or less than the words of our puja guru ji so our duty is to keep the words of puja guru ji in our heart and just walk his talk our duty is only this walk the talk so now let we pray to puja guru ji that you are so powerful we cannot understand the fully your glory your greatness is not measured by anybody nobody can measure your greatness nobody can fully glory fully explain your glory so how can our small intellect can grasp all the powers you possess so please we are praying unto your lord as like feet give us such pure intellect so that we can understand your divine powers your divine personality and never 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 believe any human like traits human like flaws in you hari krishna maharaj ni jay shri patim shri dharam sarva deveswaram bhakti dar matmajam vasudeva hare madavam keshavam kamadam ka swaminarayanam nilakantham bhaj hari krishna maharaj ni jay